Hey, Felipe, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Thank you. How about you? I'm good. Thanks. Thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, no. Thank you for having me. It's, uh, I miss you. It's, it's I know. Out. I miss you, too. <laughs> yeah, for anyone who doesn't know, Felipe and I have been friends for, what, like 10, 10 plus years? About Yeah, about 8, 10 years. So it's been... It's yeah, been so can you give everyone a little bit of a background about yourself? Yeah, so I, I'm Felipe. Um, I, I know Kat because I trained with her and her dad in Miami. Uh, we trained for quite a couple of years. I'm currently a junior at Northern Kentucky University. I'm on the men's tennis team, which is a Division One tennis team. And um, I'm studying supply chain management right now. And yeah, I think I think the point of this video is for me to tell you, you know, experiences and stuff like that. But uh, nothing better than for hear it from Kat. So. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I just want to kind of get that inside view of how college is and what your college has to offer. But um, first, let's get started with how... What was your process applying for college? How did that work for you? So I think applying for colleges for like normal students and like for student athletes is a very, very different, you know, like it's a very different process. Like I personally have a sister who she's not a, she's not an athlete mm -hmm. and she went through all like the college process and she had to do all the SATs, ACTs. Yeah. Um, she's aiming for the academics and academics is still very important when you're applying for college, regardless if you're an athlete or not. But like the way that I, I went through it, I know a lot of athletes go through it is we like I go, I look for a school tennis wise that I think I'm a good fit. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I'll email the coach with my transcript and my SAT scores and my GPA and stuff like that, with, along with my tennis highlights. And then from there, we go forward and the, usually the coach takes it to um, the admissions office mm -hmm. and we go through there. So I don't really apply until... I know I'm really interested in talking to a school and like the, there's mutual interest between the coach and I. Yeah. So I coach first, see if we're both interested, see financial, mm -hmm. see if I would get into the school, if I'm a good fit. And then if everything goes well, then I would apply. But that the application is more like, okay, we're both interested. Let's do it. Let's see what, what can happen with the academics. Whereas my sister she kind of, she's like, okay, I like the school, I like the school, I like the school she visited. And then she just applied to all of them. And kind and of see which one ever yeah takes her in and for you when you applied personally did you look more towards um the tennis side or did you look more towards the academics of the school well i definitely tennis is very important i mean i've been playing tennis since i was five i took it very seriously as cat knows very well we we suffered through homeschool for a little bit of time together yeah. um yeah i mean we put a lot of time and effort into tennis and i definitely was aiming for a division one school because i thought I was able to compete at that level mm -hmm. and I, I thought I deserved it. And like, I, you know, I, I saw myself competing at that level. So, uh, but academics is definitely, definitely important because at the end of the day, you know, after four years of college, it's really, That's what really, tennis that's it's like. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, you have to be in a place where, you know, you're going to grow as a person. You, you have all the tools you can, you can get to, you know, succeed after college and uh, location as well was kind of important for me. You know, we right. were lucky in Miami and, you know, uh, I actually, when I say Northern Kentucky University, people think I live in the, in the country, or, you know, <laughs> I'm out there farming potatoes, but uh, <laughs> actually, my school is actually um, an eight minute drive from downtown Cincinnati, which is, oh, know, that's beautiful. That's great. City, you know, tennis wise every year. Well, I don't know about this year, uh, but the Masters 1000 for men and women is there. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, there's a lot going on in Cincinnati. So that was important for me. But I think for me, it was a little bit of, of, of a balance of both, of uh, academics and, and tennis. But I definitely started looking through the tennis side. Through the tennis, yeah, of course. When you're like, like you are and as I was when we were high-performance tennis players, tennis was always our number one priority. So mm -hmm. it's just natural to go in that direction anyway. And how has your college experience been so far? <sighs> amazing. I mean, amazing. Nothing like speechless, like three, three years. It's been three years now and going into my senior year now. And like, I, I'm so happy with everything that it's, it's been, it's been a complete growing experience. Mm -hmm. I think as a person I went in, like I went in very young, like my, my 18th birthday was my first day of college. Oh, wow. I spent my 18th birthday alone in my dorm with like my teammates. But at that time they were strangers because it was my first day with them. Of course. So like, you look back at it and like you were with your friends that are the friends your friends now. But I, I was, you know, I was a quick adjustment and like a lot of things that like people don't talk about is like freshman year, how tough it is. Like I'm personally very close to my family, very close to my friends, and 
being far away from home is, is tough for everyone. Mm-hmm. And anyone who says otherwise is, is, I mean, everyone misses it a little bit and it does get of course. to us. Yeah, but at different levels. Learning how to, learning how to live by yourself, you know, feed yourself. I, I recently, like my second year, I moved to an apartment with my teammate, which is my best friend. I, I learned how to cook, you know, learning how to manage your schedule, stuff like that. But like the college experience in itself is like, I know this is going to be the best four years of my life. And mm-hmm. like, I'm look, I'm going to look back at it when I'm 30, when I'm 40, when I'm 50, and I'm still going to be like, this, this was for sure the best four years of my life. Yeah. It's good that I know it now. Cause I'm appreciating it in the moment. Yeah. That's uh, really important. You know, you get to, you know, I, like I live, I'm doing what I love. I play tennis and I live with my friends. You know, I live in a community, like a, my little apartment complex. Mm-hmm. I, you know, like, 11 like people like and we're really good friends with the soccer team like they live there's 11 houses of my friends there so like wow. we'll just hang out you know move house to house you know have them over for dinner stuff like that so and like being a collegiate athlete i mean there's nothing like it you like the student athletes are all so supportive of each other mm-hmm. you really have like there's 250 around 250 athletes in my school and that's it you have 250 people you can count on you can have your back and it's like a family. That's really good. No, yeah, no. I, I mean, for the little time that I went to my college, to my prep school, was one of the best times I ever had. So I can't imagine four years of it. It must be amazing, exactly. especially if you like it. Yeah, exactly. You build relationships that, that are stronger than, than anything because, like, you know, if, if you go through the good times, they're the ones that are there for you. Mm-hmm. If you go through the bad times, they're the ones that, I mean, I've had to, you know, if something bad's happening to my friend and he's crying, it's not like his mom could come make him a soup. He no. he comes to my room and he's like, "Hey, dude, like this happened." Yeah. Like, like can you help me out? Happened. Yeah, it's a different bond. It's you live with them, you cook together, you sleep together, you travel together, you do everything. So it's it's a different bond. Those are friends for a lifetime for sure. Mm-hmm. I mean, um, I think it's like the experiences that you have with people what what makes it like good friendships. Like, I know I'm gonna be friends with you forever because of our French our French Open trip. Our French Open. That we'll never, we'll never forget. <laughs> we'll forget that moment. No, That's that. a different story. <laughs> and what are the pros and cons you think of, of your university? At least to uh, you. Yeah, yeah, so definitely. I mean, there's a lot of pros, a lot of cons. Um, we're a mid-major, so we're not a power five. So kind of like how college athletic works is like the power five conferences, like the power five, like the SEC, the ACC, mm-hmm. the Pac-12, the Big Ten, which are those are schools that you see on TV every time and you know, you see these people living like college, college athletes traveling in private jets and, and, yeah. and like, you know, with all, you know, they make all this money and all the crowd, but the mid majors, we're still division one and stuff like that, but we don't have the budget that they do. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, personally, like my school, we're a very good basketball school and basketball is the one that makes the most money. We don't have football. Okay. Uh, ah. Our basketball team has made the NCAA tournament four out of the last five years. So that's, wow. You know, that's kind of what keeps my school growing and afloat and you know because you know a school like t- a sport like tennis doesn't really bring in a lot of money for yeah. so um but one of the i mean there's a, a lot of pros in my school like i said like the location if you want to go and get internships in cincinnati you're right there mm-hmm. um, another pro is like like the size of it we're like fifteen thousand students yeah and like i get to know my prof- my professors on a personal level like i still uh, walk the halls of my you know I'm in the college of business I walk the halls of that of that building and my accounting professor from my freshman year uh saying still remembers hey, so, you how was your match today I saw you guys won oh you know tough match we lost like they you know they, they remember your name they remember your face and and like if you really want to get involved you you can get involved and make a difference which yeah. like so it's like you can make an impact at your school if you really want to which is what so, you're doing right yeah, exactly. So I'm I'm currently uh, in in a SAC. It's called the Student Athlete Advisory Committee. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like the bridge between student athletes and like administrators to try to like improve the student athlete experience as much as we can. Okay. So if we have concerns about like, hey, we should do this. Mm-hmm. Administrators, they're not in our students' shoes, so they don't really know the problem. So we bring it to them, and then we all find ways to see how we can do it. So, I mean, it's a pretty cool thing. I've been involved since freshman year. I like little, little taking like leadership roles mm-hmm. and I actually just got appointed to represent NKU which is my university 
in our conference, which is the Horizon League. So I'm, uh, I'm going to be part of the Horizon League SAC. Okay. That's super exciting because there it starts becoming like a little bit more, more, you know, I got to have more of an impact. Yeah, that's good. Wider variety of people. So like we get to vote on like the name, likeness and image, you know, like how NCAA is seeing if maybe student athletes could get paid and stuff like that. There's a whole, that's a very complicated subject, which I, I can't really explain right now. It's, it's still very far from being passed. People think it's closer than it is. Mm. But, um, but yeah, I mean, you get to vote on like uh, the rules of NCAA, you know, eligibility rules, transfer rules and stuff like that. So it's cool to make an impact. So. And has anything that you've done changed at all yet? Or, or is it in the process or, you know, is it going to take time? I mean, it's definitely been, like, since I first got there my freshman year, there's been so much improvement. Like, Good. one of the biggest things has been, like, something as simple as, like, student-athlete support. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, we, were getting, we were getting, like, six to 7,000 people at basketball games, but then the student-athletes were going. So, like, mm. then the basketball team was like, if you don't come to my games, why would I go to your games? Right. And kind of stuff like that. I've, I've actually, like, been very involved with that. I love watching sports because I – yeah. Every single athlete that you that's there is at the top, you know, two percent in, in the whole country of right. sports. They're all Division One athletes at their respective sports. Mm-hmm. So, like, I remember my freshman year, I, we were really good friends with the volleyball team, and I was like, "I'll challenge." Like, I think the men's tennis team should take on the women's volleyball team. Um, yeah, it's volleyball. Let's just see how it goes. And I had never seen them play. Uh-huh. Then I go to I go to one of their first games and I see them warming up, and I'm like, "Uh." <laughs> I think I don't want to die today. I think <laughs> I think I want I, I want my head stayed on my body today. Yeah. Oh my goodness. No, but it's good. Like, cause I feel like a lot of people that are not student athletes as well, they don't go to games either because they don't really know the uh, the significance of it either. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. And like, if you go to games, people will re- reciprocate. Reciprocate that. it. And like a good example, like was I. I I literally, um, I, I, like I said, I like to go to a lot of games and like I expand my friend group. Like I don't care if you're on the baseball team and you're on the soccer team, you're on the track and field team. Because there's teams that, you know, it's going to happen that they don't like each other. They have history of course. Like, other stuff like that. Different personalities. Um, but I don't, I, I've actually like connected, you know. Like With a, everyone. A, yeah, like a baseball would be not friends with like a, another type of person, but they become friends. They're like, oh, wow. Like we're yeah. actually cool. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you're the middleman <laughs> exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. and um i actually like we had a our opening home match this season was against xavier university which is you know pretty well-known uni- university and they're only like 15 minutes away from our school so they're kind of like our rivals and um i went to the sac meeting and i was like hey guys look we don't like these guys these guys don't like us these mm-hmm. are our biggest rivals it's like a 50 50 match like in tennis wise mm-hmm we need you guys there. We need you guys there. And now this is given that our facilities that we play at are indoor. Mm-hmm. Well, we don't have indoor on campus. We do have outdoor. But okay. We don't we play at like at a country club about like, you know, six miles away from school. So, I mean, it's a decent drive. Okay. And uh, on a Friday night at 8.30, uh, like 8 p.m., um, I, I just, we started warming up. And I, I had like the day before, I was like, coach, I think some of them might be wanting to come to the match. So they set up like a little bleacher, you know? That's cute. We were warming up. We were warming up and people were texting me. We're coming to the game. We're so excited. We're coming to the match. We're so excited. We're coming to the match. We're so excited. And they're like, we're bringing our team. We're bringing our team. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. What is going on? We had over 115 student athletes, just student athletes. Wow. Tennis match on Friday night. Um, We had the bleachers and then we had people sitting sitting on the floor uh-huh. across the whole court and around. Wow, that's Having awesome. Up there on the balcony and on the window, like on the restaurant, people were just watching. Everyone, I was a person, I was uh, injured at the time. Mm-hmm. And college tennis, you, you know, I think, Kat, as you may know, like you could scream, you could do that stuff. Okay. As long as it's respectful, but you, you know, you get to scream. You can crowd. get loud. So I was teaching the crowd, you know, chants, like tennis chants. They didn't really know mm-hmm. what they were watching. And I was like, what time is it? And they were like, Big time. <laughs> like maybe guys were like, what is going on? Like right yeah. now, what is going on? Like there's actually like 120 people just watching a tennis match on a Friday night. Did so you end up beating them? We ended up losing 4-3, but ah. we, and we had two match points when no. we had 
we, we split two and three doubles. Like number one doubles, we were up five, three, 40, 30. Oh my God. And it was just like so tight. Both teams had like three match points and then we split the singles three, three, and we ended up losing four, three, but. I mean, well, that's great. Are, uh, you know, the, we, game and the camar- camaraderie and the cheering. That's, I mean, has it stayed that way since? Like, do you oh, think? Oh, actually, like, we didn't have as many home matches. I knew I couldn't ask for everyone to come for every match because then that right. would be. So it's kind of like choose your battles because I know tennis is not everyone's favorite sport. Yeah, if you go. don't understand it, it's not really exciting. You have to know what's yeah, going on. Yeah. So, um, like, I was like, okay, I had kind of pinpointed like a conference match that it was a home match, and we were like, okay, this will be probably an important match. Uh, it would be cool if they could repeat it. And like most people had fun. So I, I bet you like people were talking like, oh my God, I didn't know tennis was so fun. Mm-hmm. I thought that tennis was like, you know, you see on TV, you see Wimbledon and everyone's dressed in suits and they're and watching. quiet. Was, yeah, just completely The golf quiet. app. <laughs> yeah, the golf app. And I was like, no, dude, college tennis, like you see how much we're screaming. Like you guys mm-hmm. are screaming louder. So like they had a lot of fun. So like, I feel like if, if we get that exposure, to them like we give that exposure they're more likely to be like oh wow okay like let's go to the tennis match it's fun like you know yeah of course just went and stayed for the doubles point i didn't really expect them to to stay for a duration of a college tennis match because that's doubles and singles and that's yeah. like a three and a half hours and even i am sometimes i'm like let's just you know let's finish this let's, let's go home. It yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's 9 30 p.m it, yeah. you want to go home i want to go home let's just <laughs> Just finish it, win or lose, done. <laughs> like, let's just play just a bunch of deuce points, see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> deuce, every every game is deuce. deuce, deuce. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So no, it's, it's the exposure to college tennis, I think, is super important, like helping it grow. And like, yeah, I no, I think it's great because, because then, like you said, it will be reciprocated, and it's good for every team. I mean, the the point of going to a specific university is for everyone to come together and bond because you chose a university. So I think like what you're trying to do there is, is really great and try to get everyone together. I mean, that's one way of doing it. And like you said, no, n- n- people don't really know tennis like that, you know? So, and college tennis is a completely different world. But it's, it's a different sport. I, yeah. it's, when I compare like what I played in the juniors and when I played in college. When you could hear the crickets in the juniors and <laughs> well, college you, is screaming. You know, like you're hearing crickets or you're hearing kids cry because there's, <laughs> there's a boys 12 match happening right next to you. Or like, uh-huh. Stuff like that, and like college tennis is you're playing for your team, and like mm-hmm. you could lose six zero six zero that day, but your team, you know, clinched the match at four three, and it's the happiest day of your life. Exactly. Yeah. So I think I mean I know all the guys in our team are very um, like team oriented and stuff like that. So like if we win on a specific day, but the team doesn't, it's a, it's a bad day, you know. Yeah. We yeah. we won as a whole. You obviously like your tennis, your confidence and stuff like that is obviously high after a good win. Mm-hmm. Uh, at the end of the day, the, it's a, the goal is to win as a team. So, I mean. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. I agree. And, and, and it's great that you're, you're on that uh, committee because that hopefully that can change with other colleges as well. Because I, I know, I mean, when I went to West Point, since everyone is in there for the army, it already is very team oriented because it's the army. Um, so everyone was, it was mandatory for everyone to go to every other person's game. Yeah. So there was always that team spirit. Obviously, sometimes you're like, man, I don't want to go to the game because, but then once you got there, you're like, yeah, it's fun, you know? So it's, it's something good to have, I think. Like I said, it's high, it's high quality sports as well. So like, we're not going to go watch them. And then they, you know, like if, if they come watch me play tennis, I, you know, like, you know, they, oh my God, I didn't know you could hit the ball that hard, you know? Like, right. When I went to go watch the volleyball, I was, you know, these people are amazing. And, like, you know, our basketball team, well, every single guy on our basketball team can dunk and can do all these things. And, like, for me, I'm like, oh, my God, this is super cool. Like, Yeah, it's different. Everyone's really good at their own sport. So, and, like, they also get to know you better. Like, you know, like some of my teammates who were freshmen, you know, they had just mm-hmm. come in January. Like, people didn't know them. But it, if they start, like, cheering for you, like, you know, let's go, Brandon. You know, let's go this. Let's go this. So that relationship. They're like, they put a face to like that person and they're like, Oh wow. You, you know, you played good yesterday. Stuff like mm-hmm. that. Those relationships as well. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. No, no, a hundred percent. And, and when it comes to, to, to your major, you said your supply chain management, right? So I'm a global supply chain management major, which is very, you know, a lot of people like they look at me that I go, okay, okay, wait, wait, repeat that. Yeah. Yeah. Explain, explain. <laughs> Cause I don't even know. So it's kind of like logistics and kind of 
getting the product from the producer to the consumer and like the cheapest, most effective, like fastest way possible. Like, Which everyone needs in, in life, in the world. So it's a good major. It's like, like every single, you know, company, whether it be like, you know, even like McDonald's, like McDonald's needs supply chain. How do they get their, their burgers? How do they get their burgers to taste the same? Stuff like that. So every single company you're going to have supply chain. And like, it's something I like because it has like a lot of different like sections in it. Like, you know, of course. Part the producing, you can be part of like the transportation, you can be part of the like the logistic, you know, the production. So it's like, there's a lot of different ways. And I what like made it. you choose that major? So random. So um, this is a very new major in my school. And mm-hmm. like, actually I had my, one of my teammates, my room, which was my roommate, my freshman year. Um, his dad had mentioned it to us. Mm-hmm. It was a very good major. Uh, my, it was actually his friend that was starting the, you know, the, um, the major at school and like the, like the board of the major mm-hmm. it was him and his friends and like he's like everyone that kind of goes into this is very successful there's a lot of yeah. money a lot of opportunity and specifically in cincinnati like since cincinnati is like so centrally located yeah um they like they like, we can reach 70 percent of the u.s population within a 10-hour drive oh wow so it's like a big branch a lot of like like Procter and Gamble, which is one of the biggest companies in the world, you know, they produce Tide, you know, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, their headquarters in Cincinnati. Amazon is bringing their headquarters to Cincinnati. Wow. Dino has their headquarters in Cincinnati. So it's just things that, like, you know, it's, it's a never-ending like, career. You it's need it. Career, and there's there's a lot of opportunity in it, and like. Yeah, no, um, that's great. I mean, I, I, it happens on a daily basis, even every minute. Amazon. I mean, Amazon right now is blowing up because of you know what's happening right now exactly so i think i think and like the professors that i've gotten to know like i kind of went into it like okay let's just do this because the first two years i was actually an undecided business major mm-hmm. uh, i was kind of just testing the water seeing what was what i liked and stuff like that and i kind of viewed this major and i liked the like the how broad it was and how many different you know because if you go like into accounting it's it's only not, accounting you, know, yeah. you, you do accounting but like global supply chain management there's like a bunch of different, how many different, different sectors yeah it's, it's, oh, that's a great job and, and like I said it's never ending you're going to need it for the rest of your life whether it be you know you know even if you order online if everything starts to transition to online you still need a way to get it to your house and stuff like that so you need the supply chain exactly exactly and how is it balancing academics and the sports because I know that's every student athlete's nightmare yeah I mean balancing academics and the sports is definitely um, it's a challenge I mean it's I've I've kind of lived through a little bit so like I like I we've mentioned before I was homeschool I've done the homeschool, and I've done the regular school so I kind of went to regular school my whole life I went homeschool all of my junior year of high school mm-hmm. and half of my senior year and then I went back my second semester senior year because I kind of wanted the fun part of high school I kind of wanted like to go to prom go to graduation and all that yeah. stuff um, so going to academics like the time that you're in class is a lot less like. I was like, you know, look at my sister and she's going to school from 7.30 to 2.30. And I was like... And this is high school, right? This is high school. And I was yeah. like, there's no way in hell you can pay me so much amount of money that I will do that ever again in my life. Right. In school from 7.30 to 2.30. Like classes are usually 50 minutes or 75 minutes and you'll have like two or three classes a day usually. Yep, that's the same that I did. Plus uh, cl- uh, training, you know, uh, Plus, so like, like, so usually I would, I don't think I dress normally to a class ever in my life at, at college. I always either, I'm coming from practice straight to class. Uh-huh. You know, I, I feel really bad for people who sit next to me because uh, the spring we had 7, 7 a.m. practice to 9 a.m. And then I'd have a class at 9.25. Oh, no. So it'd be off-campus practice. So we would drive back straight, straight. to practice. And that's from, from January to May, we have 7 to 9 a.m. practice, which that's indoors, because that's one of the only times we could get, you know, you know, six courts for the whole team. Okay. And, uh, so I would have class from like 7 to 9, then like, no, no, I would have practice from 7 to 9, then class from like 9.25 until like 12, so that would be like two classes. Mm-hmm. There, I would go get a snack, and then like, for example, this semester I was injured. I had a torn ab, uh, so I had to go to physical therapy every day. Yeah. So it'd be like an hour, hour ten of physical therapy, 
and then I'd kind of just, you know, lounge around for like an hour. And then at three o'clock we had uh, weightlifting. Okay. From four thirty around there. So, uh, when does a typical day like in the life end? So it, it kind of depends, but yeah, around usually my day kind of ends like from like uh, in the sense of like things that you must do every day, which yes. is like class practice. Usually our fitness was ending like at four thirty or five. Sometimes we would have, and like in the fall, we were having like two hours like fitness sessions. Yeah. Um, but then you're, I mean, you've been up Homework. since, yeah, you've been up since like six a.m. So like, right. Kind of, I get home and I'm still carrying my rackets, and it's five p.m. <laughs> I've been carrying my rackets on campus for like, you know, 11 hours. I'm like, oh, I need to, I need to just relax, take a shower, yeah. make a nice dinner. And then from there, either you have your homework or you have your, um, yeah, or you just hang out with friends. But, you know, you got to do your homework, make sure you're, you're balancing your academics. I think going to class is very important. You always have to just like pay attention, go to class. It's very easy to miss class because it's mm-hmm. – like, you know, but our coach, like, I think he cares. He might even care more about academics than about. That's good. Because uh, at the end of the day, that's what we're going to leave with, you know. Exactly. Uh, so, you know, our, we have had the highest GPA in this, like, the men's tennis team, like, for the, for the men's department. I saw that. That's great. That's like, incredible. Like, out of, like, the, uh, I've been there for six semesters, I think, for, like, the four semesters. Yeah. So, like, I'm usually one of the guys that, like, holds the GPA back and, like, but in the sense that, I have a 3.6 GPA. I just got a 3.8 GPA this past semester, and I was one of the lowest in my team. So, like, we're oh, talking wow. about numbers, you know. Yeah, no, that's great. And, and so you would say, do you think that, like, your day in the life now compared to your day in the life in high school is easier? I well, take, well, erase homeschooling. I'm talking about, like, actually going to school. Yeah, I mean, now that I look back at it, I, I mean – for several, several, like most of my life, I went to school from, let's just say like in middle school, I went to school from 8.30 to 3.30. Mm-hmm. I, my mom would pick me up from, from school. I would eat in the car. The practice. <laughs> I would, yeah, my mom, would, I would eat and change in the car on my uh-huh. way. It was a drive because, you know, I, I used to train with you guys, which was like a 30 minute drive for me, but it was definitely worth it because it was a really good, you know, academy and stuff like that. So yeah. uh, it was like a 30 minute drive. And I would eat and change in the car and then train from four to seven. I remember that, man. Seven, like seven fifteen ish, you know, because you kind of stay like, okay, let's hang out with our friends for like 10 minutes after practice. Uh huh. And like, there was like the group of moms that, you know, that were really. That always talk and sat there at the corner. (laughs) So, um, get home like at 7 45, shower, and it's like 8 20, and you're like, okay, now let's start school. Yeah, I remember. No, I remember because the only time that, uh, since my dad was our coach, the only time he was able to program tennis was when everyone was done with school. Like, for example, you were done with school at 3.30 and others at 2.30, but it wasn't fair if they started earlier. You know what I mean? So four to seven. Four to seven was it. And I mean, I did that. And like, that was my normal life. Like, I I didn't really think it was like, okay. You know, I look back at it now. I was like, wow. Crazy. Crazy. Like, but you said limited homeschool, but homeschool is a different lifestyle too. I mean, I would train from yeah. nine to 12. Then from 12 to two, we had like school slash lunch. Yeah, I remember. Lunch. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't school, lunch. You know, it, it, it was, was chicken kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like from like nine to 12, you know, like nine to 12, you, you know, you're, you're, you're training, you're, you're in the sun, you know, it's mm-hmm. Miami heat, mm-hmm. very, very strong. So I think from 12 to 2, even if you tried doing school, it wasn't you really feasible. Yeah, it wasn't something that you could really do. And then train from 2 to 5 again. Mm-hmm. But then you go home and you're... You don't want to do anything. <laughs> you don't want to do anything. So it's, I mean, physically and mentally, with uh, homeschool is very, very tough. Mm-hmm. Season and how did the pandemic affect it? So, like, the team, we we're having, um, I'm not going to lie, our, our, my freshman and sophomore year, we we're kind of, like, rebuilding and stuff like that. Um, when I went in my freshman year, we lost five seniors, so it was kind of, like, Oof, that's tough. we had, like, five freshmen and two sophomores, and the guy was playing five, move up to one. So, it was, it was a tough year. So, we finally, you know, we had, a, like, we finally got the team chemistry, finally got everything going. And this, this past year was amazing. We finished six and six. Okay. Uh, but uh, we won six out of our la- we won six out of our last eight. So we were oh, like, wow. we were going, we were going. 
And this was really cool because this past year, um, we opened up our season against the number one team in the country, Ohio State. Oh, and wow. It was, it was their season opener as well. So, I mean, that – at, like the atmosphere was tough, you know, it was, it was electric, you know, going into Ohio State, which is, you know, one of the most storied programs in the nation. They have like a, they've won, I think the record's around like 283 out of their last 284 home matches. So it's like, <laughs> it, it's not, it's like you go in there and you just try to have fun. You, you know, you just try to, you know, make them a tough day for them at the office. And Did you guys give them, up a good fight? So actually, yeah, I mean, we went in there and we we're like, you know what? Like, we're here for a reason. Like, they called us up. Like, you know, I know they might not take us as seriously as they take a team like mm-hmm. Florida or something like that, but we're going to come in here. We're going to make them respect us and stuff like that. We came out. They had the number one doubles team in the country, which is John McNally and Robert Cash. Okay. And our, we had a freshman, which was his first collegiate match. No freaking way. This little French, this little French kid had no idea where he was coming. And like, I was like, dude, look, listen, like, these guys are the best in the country. Like, don't worry if it goes back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. And, uh, six three. It was just one break, a deuce point. Uh, we competed against them. Every point was like six three in doubles. So that was, you know, encouraging. You know, we we're like, okay. Mm-hmm. We went into singles, and like, I mean, they were playing John McNally at number. They played a full lineup. They played John McNally at number two singles, and John McNally had just been a uh, Brazilian tennis player, Thomas Bellucci, six two, six two. Like six days before he played us, had a challenge. <laughs> we're talking about like you know, professional level players that you know are competing at the highest level, and uh, we went in there and uh, we kind of, I mean, I think every match was like two and three, you know, one and three, you know, one and four, and then our number three player, uh, he was a, our senior. He had set point. Uh. He was a six five deuce, uh, six five six five. 40 30, and then this kid hits two return slap winners. Of course. Doesn't even know how. Like, the kid just kind of went for it. And then it was like downhill. And then my guy lost the, the tie break. And, but I mean, we went in there and we're like, wow, we actually just played with Ohio State. It was like a two hour match. Yeah, and I'm you sure know, they respected you after that. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's exciting because we were like, we might get called back up like next season, you know, mm-hmm. for, That's for them, good. it was a good test. They were celebrating. They were like, cheering it wasn't like oh my god this guy this, you know we were, we were respected we were played at a, a high level and that was our first match of the season so we were like okay if we if we competed against ohio state to a certain level like you know then our, our we played xavier which was like the match that we had previously talked about and then we played against kentucky university of kentucky mm-hmm. and that's another top 25 team mm-hmm. which this, they, had, they had this freshman liam draxel who was like uh-huh. top top five itf you know yeah uh so stuff like that. And we went to Kentucky and we're like, oh, come on. I mean, they're not a hard state. We could, you know, we, we, could, do it. we could try to do something. Mm-hmm. Uh, doubles didn't go as planned against Kentucky. Yeah, um, that was a quick little, you know, they, they were just too strong. Yeah. But uh, then next thing you know, singles, every single match, one through four, it's four, three on serve. Oh, so wow. That's great. We were like, okay, we're, you know, we're, we're competing. We're doing good. We're, we're battling. And that's something we had never done. And that kind of like, you know, we, we did start the season 0-4, mm-hmm. but we did play Ohio State, Kentucky. And then Xavier matches kind of can go either way. And we played another team, which is Lipscomb, which can, you know, one of the best teams in the region. And we competed. We lost 5-2 when uh, three of our guys were injured. We, we had our number five. Who hits a, his best shot is a backhand. He was a two-handed backhand. He's hitting one-handers because he, like, hurt his wrist. And yeah. he won three sets. You get me? It was like, oh my gosh. we were like, okay, we can do this. And we believed in ourselves, even though we were 0-4. And mm-hmm. next thing you know, we won. We went six and two. Uh, you know, heading into we had two matches where which uh, yeah. So like, I mean, you kind of just look at it how like from the pandemic, we just started kind of believing, believing and stuff like that. And then um, in the preseason rankings, we were we were, we were fifth in the in our mm-hmm. conference, and we actually ended up with the best horizon, like the best record in our conference before the pandemic. That's great. So look at that, we, like, we put ourselves second in our conference because there is a very good team called Cleveland State. Oh, They've yeah. won in the past three years, and they have you know a couple guys where their top three are pretty much the 13 UTR, so it'd be wow. tough. But uh, you see, even at a mid-major, you know, you have three guys at the top three. Which, which is great. State, which are 
you know, 13 UTR, so like the competition level was very high. Um, I mean, that's good. I mean, I mean, it sucks and it's good that you started your season with Ohio State because then from then on, you can see how you can improve. I mean, it, exactly. some like people match, take like, it differently. Exactly, yeah. We, we, went, we started 0-4, but we're like, it's okay. We're competing. We're playing tough teams. Exactly. And we kind of believe we kept believing, we kept training, we kept believing and, and kind of showed off at the end when we went on conse- consecutive matches winning and stuff like that. So it was Yeah, it paid off at the end. Yeah, I mean that you can only improve from there. You see the level that you guys can play and then you improve. I'm sure you guys have improved all of you since that match. It's yeah, a good definitely. opportunity. Okay, and to finish it off, what is your best experience so far in college? I mean, best experience like tennis like tennis wise to this day no and and any anything anything you want to say oh i can give you like a couple tennis ones and maybe like you know yeah uh just kind of like the tennis ones was uh right before the pandemic like we were actually in a a spring break trip in orlando Mm -hmm. and we were on a three match we played three matches and it was like a tough day at the national campus so windy of course you know (laughs) so so we weren't even playing tennis. It was yeah, like, just, just swinging. Kind of, it was badminton, just swing, see what happens, yeah. kind of thing. And we were playing a team that we thought we were better than, but you know they're a good D one team, they're a decent, you know, mid major team in Quinnipiac. And it came down to my my roommate, my best friend, and uh, he was playing like this, this Croatian guy who was you know cursing at my parents, cursing at our coaches, cursing at our women's team, like being super obnoxious. <laughs> And we, we were like, let's turn this up. Let's start, you know, chanting. We started doing yeah. chants. My friend clinched it. Oh, we my ran goodness. On, we ran on, you know, typical college style. Like, I had never been a part of one. We had never yeah. been. I had never been in, like, part of, like, a 4-3 clinch on the positive side. So, we ran. We enjoyed that. Like, it was crazy. Like, it was, you know, we were on the so blue. Awesome. We, and then, actually, the next day, we played against Fairfield, which was, like, another team in that conference as well. And we won 6-1, but our softball team was in Orlando as well. So they came to watch. Oh, so it's already nice. like 35 girls. So they were chanting. People at the national campus were like, who, <laughs> like, why are all these girls here? Like, like uh-huh. what is this? Yeah. And then like, we went 6-1 and like, we all sprinted again. Our, our number one won in three sets. Yeah. We all just sprinted again. We all like love in life. We were like, oh, let's go, let's go. You know, so those are things that like, I'm not going to forget for sure. Never. No, those are the best experience. I have goosebumps. <laughs> yeah. That's why you play college tennis. I mean, it's for moments like that. And then one of the coolest moments outside of tennis um, mm-hmm. was actually, we went to actually like the best athletic event I've been to was watching volleyball. I'm telling you, collegiate volleyball is, is Insane. so fun. It's so fun. Cause they're uh-huh. so athletic. And, like, the points are just really, like, fun. You know, you yeah. never know what's going to happen. Every point, you know, something crazy happens. And our volleyball team actually got to the conference finals to see if they could go to NCAAs for the first time in school history. Oh, my gosh. And, like, we went to we went to go watch them, which is, like, an hour away. There was, like, a, like a fan bus. Mm-hmm. So, my team and I, and, I mean, there was, like, since it's only an hour away from our school, we had, like, 150 people there. Oh, and when they won, so it was like the first time in school history, and it was a lot of my good friends, and we wow. all like just rushed the field, stuff like that. So, uh, not to feel the court, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, relax. <laughs> that's hilarious. But, uh, that's yeah, so good. It's, it's super cool, and like, and yeah, I mean, it's just. Well, it sounds like your college is very like team oriented, so that's uh, that's something I love. Yeah, we try, we try. I mean, it, it all depends on like how you go about it. You, know, mm-hmm. you can ask someone that also goes to my university and they're like oh no it sucks um i don't have any friends and there's it's no fun everyone yeah but to- that's a party pooper right there it's just like how you make of it it's all completely what you make of it like, and that's in life are- though yeah it's my my school's a commuter college 70 mm-hmm. percent of people just like live at home with their parents and just come for classes and stuff like that right but i found my people that like you know are like me and they're like okay you know mm-hmm. what four years i think the best out of it you know let's have some fun let's live a good time it's so yeah well i'm glad you're having a great time it was so good to talk to you of course always and hopefully you're taking care of everyone gotta watch out for the cat making the comeback <laughs> i'm trying to make a comeback this pandemic stopped me i was about to make my comeback exactly no, she was making the comeback but we're coming back stronger stronger than ever so we are that's what's up all right felipe thank you so much i appreciate it bye see you guys